Greetings! Welcome to our next lecture which is entitled Fluid Mechanics. As you may know, this is the branch of mechanics that deals with the properties of fluids in various states and with their reaction to forces acting upon them. So we start with studying the definition of fluids. Fluids is defined as any substance that can flow, such as gases and liquids. So these are the pictures of the examples. Understanding fully the concept of fluids leads us to study first the very fundamental concept of density. Here, density is denoted by Greek letter rho, and it is actually defined as the amount of matter contained in a certain space or volume. Mathematically speaking, this is just the ratio between mass and volume. Here, Mass is denoted by M and the volume is denoted by capital V. So if you look at the SI unit for density, this is actually expressed in terms of kilograms per cubic meter. A common misconception of density happens when one looks at the shape or the size of the object and not the ratio between the mass and the volume, which is unique for every object due to its unique composition. Hence, one fails to realize that the two objects in this slide have the same density. This table gives us the different values of the densities of different materials. So notice, as mentioned earlier, every material has a unique composition. Hence, the value of the density is also unique. So when does density changes? So in here, density changes when the temperature and the pressure of the system change. So increasing the pressure on an object decreases the volume and thus increases its density. Here, if you look at inside the piston, since the volume decreases and that the collisions of this particle inside this volume also increases, that creates enough pressure and that density increases. On the other hand, when temperature of the substance increases, the volume also increases, thus density decreases. If you look at the scenario inside the cylinder, since the collisions of particles within the cylinder is lesser compared with the earlier case, the pressure decreases and thus density also decreases. There is a quantity that is closely related to density and we call this one as specific gravity denoted by SG. Here we define specific gravity as the ratio between the density of the substance to the density of a reference material. In this case, our reference material is the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. Since specific gravity is a ratio between two densities, so specific gravity has no units. So mathematically, we represent specific gravity as raw substance over raw water. Knowing that density affects pressure, we now look into the definition of pressure. So pressure is just defined as the force per unit area applied in a direction perpendicular to the surface of an object. So in this case, here is our applied force to a certain surface object. So pressure can be measured around this area. 
and it is just equal to the force exerted by this uh, object into this flat surface with this uh, area at the bottom. Now, if we look at the SI unit for pressure, it's just equal to Newton per square meter, and that should be equal to Pascal. Now also, Pascal is related to atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is actually the pressure that is exerted by air molecules to us, the human beings, and any living creatures or non-living creatures in, in the surface of the Earth. And one atmospheric pressure is just equal to 1.013 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. Let us try to discuss why pressure is affected by height and by the concept of density. In this case, let's consider a certain container which contains a fluid and that the fluid is actually in static equilibrium. Furthermore, we assume that at any level, as long as the object lies at the same depth, the pressure is also the same. And here, at the bottom portion of this uh, slide, we try to measure how does the pressure of a certain object that is immersed in a fluid can be calculated. So in here, we try to assume that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to g, and that is just equal to 9.8 meters per second square. And that the density is also uniform all throughout the fluid. Now, if you take the difference between the pressure exerted by the fluid at the bottom and the pressure exerted by the fluid at the top, that can be measured by this formula. So in this case, notice that uh, we can uh, measure pressure as equal to uh, P2 minus P1. So P2 is actually the pressure that is uh, measured here at the bottom, while P1 is actually the pressure that is uh, observed here at the top. Since pressure is just equal to rho G and some height, in this case, we can replace P2 by just uh, rho G and Y2 and then minus uh, P1, which is actually rho G Y1. So if you simplify the right-hand side, you can actually rewrite Y2 minus Y1 as the height. Now, the height is actually the height of this object that is immersed in a fluid. So bottom line is, when you're asked about the pressure at a certain portion, Okay, or the or the difference between the pressure of an object immersed in the fluid, you can simply uh, use this formula, which is equal to rho g h. There are two types of pressure that we encounter in this discussion. First is we have gauge pressure, and gauge pressure is defined as difference between a known pressure. And atmospheric pressure, the excess pressure above atmospheric pressure is what we call as the gauge pressure. Now we can actually uh, observe this in this uh, formula at the bottom. So uh, rho gh here, when you transpose p sub zero, this is actually the atmospheric pressure. If you transpose this to the left. And so you will uh, get the rho GH, that would be our uh, gauge pressure. On the other hand, if you take the atmospheric pressure as it is at the, at the right hand side, so this is now the definition of the absolute pressure. The left hand side is actually the absolute pressure and it is defined as the true pressure. Okay? That includes the atmospheric pressure. So this formula is uh, similar to the previous equation that we have, only that we transpose the 
other pressure from the left hand side to the right hand side and then we try to rewrite the subscript from P2 we just drop the 2 and that becomes P and then the other one is P1 and we change the subscript 1 into 0 that considers to be or assumes the atmospheric pressure so somewhat in this formula we try to assume that the object is actually immersed in the fluid but the top portion is actually at the level of the surface of the fluid so that's why we can have the value of the atmospheric pressure this illustration best differentiates the concept of gauge pressure and absolute pressure so remember atmospheric pressure is the pressure that is exerted by air molecules in the earth's atmosphere so now if we look at the case when the gauge pressure is actually zero so the equation at the top becomes p equals p atm so that would mean the pressure if you if you base it in the wheel of the car so the pressure at inside the wheel is just equal to the pressure outside the wheel so that makes the wheel flat okay on the other hand if the wheel is not flat that means that the pressure inside the wheel is greater by or greater than the pressure outside which is actually the atmospheric pressure and by how much the absolute pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure that is actually equal to the gauge pressure I have mentioned a while ago that our notations have shifted from P2 and P1 into P and P sub 0 respectively so this is actually the setup where we can use this new form of the equation which is actually equal to p equals p sub zero plus p gauge take note that p sub zero here is actually the gauge pressure so now if you try to look at that the setup we have actually two levels here this is the first level and the second level is actually this one so when you are asked to find the pressure at this particular level so you can actually measure that using this formula and take note the pressure at this level is just the same since the fluid here has uniform density so now the formula says that it is just equal to p sub zero that is actually the pressure at the top since they are actually in the same level and that the tube here is open and the earth's atmosphere interacts at the surface so that's why the atmospheric pressure is uh, measured at the surface of this uh, uh, tubes so now uh, you just add the gauge pressure which is actually the raw GH so that's uh, the density the acceleration due to gravity and the height of this uh, setup so that's actually the pressure at the bottom